It's just a public service announcement. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. Ho. H to the O V. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? We got another great episode of Pro Sports Takes today. Yesterday, we covered the NBA's most underrated player, so give that a listen if not already. And today, we're taking it to the gridiron and giving our takes on the most underrated player in football. Seems like Matthew Stafford has become the face of being Mr. Underrated for so long that He can no longer even be considered that underrated, but a man who continues to go under the radar is one of the best pass rushers in the league that nobody talks about in the LSU alumni, Daniil Hunter. I don't know why he continues to get overlooked if it's because nobody likes to pronounce his name correctly or because for a while he was in Everson Griffin's shadow, but any player, specifically any offensive lineman will tell you Hunter is one of the league's elite at getting to the quarterback. Like looking at any pass rushing productivity metric out there, Daniel Hunter is up there with the Khalil Max, Von Millers, Chandler Joneses, and Cam Jordans of the world, but doesn't get near the credit or claim he should. If it wasn't for a meaningless week 17 game that the Viking starters didn't really play much because they already had the playoffs locked up, Hunter would have had the most quarterback pressures in the entire league last year, showing the value that he provides from the defensive end position. But make no mistake about it, Hunter is more than just a pass rushing specialist as he's very stout in the run game too with his ability to shed blocks, set the edge, and just consistently make successful tackles. I really believe Hunter should be viewed as one of the best edge rushers in the league, up there with the guys I just named and maybe it'll just have to take him to pass some of those career milestones over the coming years for players to really start taking notice but he's only 25 years old coming off back-to-back 15 sack seasons so maybe other than TJ Watt or Miles Garrett who are much more unproven at this point there might not be any edge rusher in the entire NFL to bet on over the next five years than the man in Minneapolis who's just entering his prime. And now that Everson Griffin, Xavier Rhodes, and Linval Joseph are no longer wearing purple, expect Hunter to take more of that leadership role alongside Harrison Smith and Eric Kendricks and really help a defense that's as young as ever try to quickly overcome those growing pains. Soon enough, NFL fans all over the country will know exactly who Daniil Hunter is and the impact he has on Minnesota's monster defense. Daniil Hunter puts up numbers every year, and he's been a great piece on that Vikings front seven. Those 48 sacks that he's put up over those last four years is ridiculous by a player that's only 25. He's posted back-to-back 14-plus sack seasons, and at the end of the day, he's still a player that we don't hear about enough from the media, from the fans, so I think that's a great take. And I'm going to stay on the defensive side of the ball, but I'm going to go to an AFC powerhouse, and I'm choosing the Steelers cornerback, Steven Nelson. Steven Nelson. Yes, sir. The Steelers knew Nelson was a hell of a player, so they made a rare move and signed the fifth-year corner to a three-year, $25.5 million contract this offseason. That doesn't sound like a lot of money, though, right? He's the 20th highest paid cornerback in the NFL, despite being PFF's sixth ranked corner in 2019. The Steelers deserve credit, especially since this is the highest the organization has ever paid for an unrestricted free agent. GM Kevin Colbert re-signs a one-year deal every single year, so he's feeling the heat to make win-now moves. So Nelson was the Steelers' second biggest addition last year, and he's been overshadowed by all-pro safety Minka Fitzpatrick, who's one of the plenty reasons why this defense has skyrocketed over the last couple of years. They get elite production out of T.J. Watt. Cam Hayward's one of the best or one of the most consistent players in the NFL. Stephon Tewitt's a force inside, even though he missed most of the 2019 season. Joe Hayden gets most of the recognition, and he's very solid even at 31 years old. But Steven Nelson is the unspoken piece of that young, elite Steelers defense. Steven Nelson truly has held it down in Pittsburgh, only allowing 33 catches and 500 coverage snaps in the 2019 season. 33 catches and 500 coverage snaps. The Nelson-Joe Hayden connection is working, though. It's been one of the best secondary duos of last season, and the defense was top three in passing yards allowed in the NFL. 
The fifth-year cornerback came from the 2018 Chiefs team, and he posted four interceptions and 15 pass deflections that year. The young pro shines in that abysmal defense, and that's probably why he's overlooked kind of at this point in his career. But the Chiefs elected to let him walk as his rookie contract came to an end, and Nelson has never been considered the number one or the best cornerback on his team in his NFL career up to this point, even though he's arguably been better than Joe Hayden and Kendall Fuller. Despite his above-average performances, Nelson still flew under the radar this season and did not get a Pro Bowl nod, but I expect those things to change in 2020 as he'll get some well-deserved recognition. Nelson's a winning player, and he's lining himself up to make a big payday when he's eligible two years from now, but he has to find a way to generate more than one interception that he did in 2019. But that also relies on quarterbacks looking his way. Yeah, man. Heading into this show, I really believed Daniel Hunter was the most underrated player. But damn, even hearing that Steven Nelson was PFS six ranked corner, done all those things, locked up wide receivers on a game to game basis and on the free agent market where players consistently get overpaid. He was only the 20th highest paid cornerback in the NFL. That's very interesting. And considering the fact that Daniel Hunter already has two Pro Bowls under his belt and Steven Nelson lacks that. So very much appreciate where you're coming from with that take there, B. But either way, both these guys are putting up elite production. And most of the people listening to this, unless they're hardcore fans, might not recognize the greatness that both these players put on the field. Yeah, I mean, these players put up greatness these last couple of years. I mean, they're really elevating their game each year. Their names starting to become more recognized. But in 2020, we think they're really going to break out and their names are really going to be spoken as household names. But we did stay on the defensive side of the ball with this whole conversation. So, Rob, if you had to go with an offensive play off the top of your mind, who would you think is one of the most underrated players in the NFL? An underrated offensive player. I mean, you could pretty much name a lot of offensive linemen that obviously go under the radar and consistently, you know, make ways for their team. But kind of going off that, not necessarily an offensive lineman, but a position that goes under the radar. I'm going to go Kyle Yusevic. Mm. Not sure if I'm pronouncing Juszczyk. that. Yusevic. Juszczyk. But uh, that man, he really does it all for the 49ers offense. He blocks, he catches passes, he totes the rock in situations where they need him to. And he's really just a chess piece that Kyle Shanahan uses perfectly and really is a big part of why they had offensive success. And you saw when he went down at the end of the season, I think the 49ers went like five and three or something like that down the stretch as opposed to going undefeated for the first half. So he clearly has a major impact. Who would you say would be your offensive underrated player? Yeah, I think Yus checks a good choice. I'm mean, going to call him Yus out in San Fran. Uh, he was actually one of my best bets of last year. I bet that he would score a touchdown in the Super Bowl, and he did just that. So yeah. shout out Yus check. He's a great blocker. He plays all over the field. Uh, I was trying to stay with a tight end position, maybe. I was thinking he doesn't get a lot of recognition because he mainly blocks, and that's the Ravens tight end, Nick Boyle. Nick Boyle started almost every game for the Ravens over the last two or three seasons. He's basically the reason why they let Matt Williams walk. He also made it past Hayden Hurst's tenure in Baltimore. All the noise and all the respect goes to Mark Andrews because he's posted big numbers these last two years. And this Ravens team is known for the rushing attack. And he's been a huge part in that. That's why he started most of those games those last two years, because he pushes blockers, he pushes defensive linemen around, and he just makes great spectacular plays. He gets to the next level, and he's not worried about getting that recognition. He's a unheralded. He came into the NFL as more of an unheralded guy that played at the FCS level at Delaware, and yet he still just shined and made his mark in the NFL. Yeah, that's another good take there. But unlike Steven Nelson, the Ravens did pay Boyle the bank. I think they they made him like a top five, top ten highest paid tight end, something like that. But the media and the fans definitely don't recognize him on a national level, whereas people who know the game, like the Ravens front office, obviously, you know, made sure that they kept him in, in town, even with one of the top tight ends in the NFL and Mark Andrews. So clearly shows how they think about his blocking capabilities and the impact he has. And so those are some of the most underrated players in the NFL, some names to remember going forward. So lock it in. That's our take for the day. And you can find all pro sports takes on prosportsoutlook.com or even better if you're already subscribed to Pro Sports Outlook's YouTube channel. And that wraps up this episode of Pro Sports Takes. And remember, we encourage everyone to go ahead and leave comments about the player or even the team you want us to discuss. Tweet us at PSO underscore sports or simply use the hashtag Pro Sports Takes. And we'll continue to monitor what's hot so we can give it a spot on our future show. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. Let's get it.